Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to turn all of this into this. Uh, these things are very complicated at first, but once you realize that there is a very specific way that they need to be put together, it's actually goes from terrifying to kind of enjoyable. So anyways, let's get at it. All right, well, if you're new to the channel, uh, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe, especially if this helps you out. Um, this is something that uh, up until uh, just an hour or two ago, um, I have wrestled with this a few times. And let me tell you, uh, the first time that I accidentally took it apart, it was so deeply terrifying. Uh, it's hard to even put into words how scared I was of trying to deal with this. But uh, after spending a little bit of time around it, I've discovered that there's actually a method that uh, makes it quite simple and, like I said, kind of enjoyable. So these connectors, uh, this is off a 96 Dodge Ram 3500, but my uh, 99 Dodge Dakota has uh, basically the same looking thing. I think these are probably common on a lot of Dodge vehicles. I can't say for sure which ones, but uh, anyways, let me just explain how that goes together. Okay, so I just have to say that I am definitely not a mechanic. Um, like I said, I just kind of figured this out within the last hour. So just treat this as entertainment and research as you're learning how to properly deal with it. I should also mention, this is a, a very technical thing to be in. Um, I'm uh, pretty new to working on cars, but I have jumped into every major system on this vehicle, including rebuilding transmission, transfer case, the engine, uh, re-gearing the axles, new ring and pinion, stuff like that. So I'm probably uh, a little bit off the deep end in terms of the kind of stuff I'll jump into. But I just have to say, um, if you don't feel comfortable after watching this video and doing your own research, uh, there's no shame in that. This is something that uh, should probably be left to a professional. And anyways, I'm gonna jump in and show you how to assemble this, and uh, it's actually a lot more simple than it looks. Okay, so uh, these are 32 pin connectors. Uh, they go on PCMs or on ECMs of Dodge vehicles. There's possibly other ones out there as well. As you can see, these are numbered, okay? So if you uh, go and Google the PCM pinout chart for your particular vehicle, um, there's some stuff online. You could get it out of a factory service manual or possibly uh, track it down online, but uh, just make sure it's a reliable source. But it'll tell you every wire uh, and um, the color code on it, the white one with pink and et cetera, et cetera, and what pin it's supposed to be in. So you got to remember that. That is very important. Okay, next up, uh, you will see that I have got the uh, PCM out of my truck. As I said, this is out of my 96 Dodge Ram 3500. Um, these typically, there's a white one, a gray one, and a black one. Um, they all have different grooves. As you can see, these ones are all about the same spacing. These ones are closer together and farther apart, farther apart, closer together. So uh, they can't be plugged into the wrong one. So anyways, uh, what I'm doing right now is trying to repair uh, my wire harness. At some point, I'm going to go through and uh, do all of this stuff properly and replace the whole thing. But right now, I've got some transmission shifting issues, and uh, they all relate to two of these connections here, the white one and the gray one. And uh, I've actually got five codes that uh, are thrown right now. So I'm going to go through, uh, this bit of wiring is actually uh, from a junkyard vehicle that I got recently. This is uh, in much better shape than the stuff that's on my truck. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, put this in, try and connect it into my main system, and uh, hopefully I can get some of my electrical problems sorted out. So let's go ahead and assemble one of these, and I'll show you how it goes. So as you can see, that won't go in either of there. Either of those, it goes in this one. Even if you try and flip it upside down, it won't go in. These are very specific with how they go in. Okay, next up, you have got this little blue thing. Um, it's got a bit of a tab. Sorry, it's hard to show. There's a tab on the left side there, pointing towards the camera. These things uh, have like a little slot and a circle, and the goal of that, or the purpose of that, 
is to lock these in place on that little groove right in between those two bumps, okay? So this piece here, it's got two tabs on one side and the other side is not like that, but this side has that little tab pointed up, okay? So that little tab there needs to be pointed down and those two little things that poke out, those are gonna come out of these two slots right there, okay? So the first step is to put this in here so that those two can come out and then that little tab is pointed down because there's a little groove that it lives in right uh, down in there you can probably see that there's a little kind of uh, groove right down in there try and zoom in on it pretty hard to see but i think you can tell that uh, right there there's a little uh, groove okay so this goes in like that with this little tab here pointed down. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how this thing works. So right now, you can't really see right through the holes because uh, this thing is slid over to the left, okay? Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is to kind of lock this thing in place and how you do that is by sticking a small flat blade screwdriver. How you can see the blue Sorry, this is kind of a two-handed job. You can see the blue piece in there. I'm gonna push on that very gently. This stuff is all 25-year-old plastic. Okay, push through and you hear a click. And that is now, these two blue tabs are poking out this side, okay? Now, when you look through there, you can see that the holes for the blue piece are lined up with the main holes, okay? So the first time I attempted to do this, I made the huge mistake of trying to go through each one of these layers uh, independently and trying to slide this over, you know, all 15 or 20 wires is a complete nightmare. So what I'm doing here instead, and this just made all the difference in the world. It's tough to even put into words uh, how much stress was relieved by this. You've got that blue piece down, like I said. You gotta make sure that those two blue tabs are poking out. That means that the holes are lined up. And you drop this in here. It's kind of finicky. Then, uh... There we go. Okay, so that drop down in there. Next up is gonna be this uh, real gummy weather sealing thing here. Okay. After that, we're going to go this piece here. It kind of clicks down in there. Okay. Now is the time when you start putting your stuff through. So if you ever need to double check, like I said, these ones are all numbered on this side. Sorry, this one's kind of in terrible shape. But anyways, now we can just go ahead and poke this through. Just be gentle with it. You'll kind of feel a little click when you get right down to the end with that first plastic or the second plastic layers. Got some little tabs that hold it in place. All right, now just keep going, putting them in. Obviously I'm just throwing these in for demonstration purposes. I'm just, it's hard to do one-handed. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a bunch in here and then we'll just click this on and it's done. Okay, so once you've got those all in place, you just uh, press on these two blue tabs here with a screwdriver, just be very gentle and it clicks over and now these wires are all locked in place. I mean, it's not gonna be an insane amount of power holding them there, but it should be enough that you can kind of get things together. Next up, I'll just uh, put this cover on, kind of a two-handed job. All right, so this is all clicked in place. You'd probably wrap some tape around that part there just to keep everything uh, secure and protected. But uh, as you can see, it is a uh, fairly straightforward process once you follow uh, the correct procedure.
Now, when I say correct procedure, um, uh, take it with a grain of salt. Like I said, I'm just uh, some guy on the internet doing my best. But anyways, this is something that uh, for me personally has gone from extremely terrifying to uh, as long as you know that each one of those pins and wires is in the correct hole, those numbered holes, um, this is actually pretty doable. And uh, I'm going to be going through the electrical system, definitely the underhood stuff at some point, but right now I'm just trying to get this stuff cleaned up, uh, get rid of some of my disgusting wiring and just confirm or disconfirm if that was the problem with the transmission shifting. Anyways, I really hope this helped some people. Um, if I had watched this video uh, a couple days ago, it would have changed my life pretty dramatically. So uh, this stuff, if you do it the wrong way, is incredibly finicky. This is old, brittle plastic. It's 25 years old, so easy to break this stuff. But uh, anyways, I hope this helped. Um, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe, and check out some other stuff on my channel, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.